Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, uh, and uh, in the last video, I started talking a little bit about a very exciting new finding, um, paper just released about the Arctic Ocean, um, and a mechanism to explain why we could have these tremendous increases in temperature as, as recorded in the ice um, in Greenland, Greenland ice cores, of up to 8 to 10 degrees Celsius in a matter of a decade or two, and in one case, 16.5 degrees Celsius temperature rise recorded happened over Greenland in the space of a decade or two. Okay, so these massive uh, rises in temperature from the cold ice age state to a much warmer um, situation. So in this particular uh, case, I'm talking about basically the Arctic Ocean was, became essentially completely fresh. And we know that in the Carboniferous period, you know, millions and millions of years ago, um, the Arctic was a much warmer place, and there's, there, there were forests growing, and there were turtles in the water, and um, crocodiles and things like that. Warm, warm, you know, is extremely warm. Those, those creatures could only exist when it's extremely warm. So, you know, it was, it was lush um, and, and uh, a completely different world. So we know that, and a lot of that is related to continental drift changing passageways of the ocean, etc. But in the last 150,000 years, we did not know, we had no idea before um, now, that not only was there all of this water stored in the ice, you know, ice and snow in the Arctic, but there was water, fresh water stored in liquid form in the entire Arctic Ocean. So how can that happen? You know, the Arctic Ocean's connected to the Pacific and the Atlantic, and there's flows of water, so it's, you know, very salty environment. It's a, it's a, how could it be completely fresh water under the ice? So I'm going to explain that. Um, essentially, the sea level was 130 meters lower, so, the, so therefore the Bering Strait was completely above sea level. Right, so there was no strait there. It was a land bridge, Beringia. We know that uh, Ice Age um, mammals crossed that ice bridge, and then and people as well. There was no connection through the Canadian Archipelago. That was all dry land, so no zero connection to the Pacific. Now on the Atlantic side, there's there's two kind of choke points. Um, one, you know, through the Fram Strait over to to um, Europe. You know, it's pretty shallow in most places, but there's still some very deep passages where water could flow. But the study shows that that was all fresh water, but it was also fresh water uh, down as far as the Greenland to Scotland passage. Okay, if you look on the bathymetry maps, which I'll show you, very, very shallow waters. When you have a 130 meter sea level drop, a lot of it is land. And the channels that existed, well, we had massive ice sheets in Europe, covering Europe and also covering Greenland and covering North America. And these ice, um, these glaciers on land, these ice sheets, where they met coastlines, you had these tremendous ice, ice shelves that were floating. And those ice shelves, some of them were like 900 meters thick. And that 900 meters, 10% would be above water, above sea level, so 90 meters, and 90% below. So over 800 meters below sea level, the ice would extend. Combine that with a 130 meter sea level drop, and that was just about 930 meters or you know, close to a kilometer um, underneath the present uh, level of sea level. Okay, so that basically choked off the connection to the, arc, to the Atlantic, if you look at the bathymetry. So the combination of those two things, plus you're, getting, you're always adding fresh water to the Arctic in rivers and snow melt and rain, etc. that basically, that water that was stuck under the, under the ice and the sea ice and the ice caps, um, pushed out all of the salt water. 
So, you know, we have solid evidence that between 60 and 70,000 years ago, and also between 130, 150,000 years ago, the entire Arctic Ocean was fresh water. And this explains a lot because when the ice started to melt and that fresh water was released very quickly into the Atlantic and also on the Pacific side, then it did things like shut down the Gulf Stream, causing uh, you know, rapid, uh, abrupt climate transitions. You know, before we couldn't account for enough water doing that, but this totally changes the ball game. I can't overemphasize how how important this is. So let's talk about that study and then the related studies on the Arctic uh, system changes. And then I'll and then in a subsequent video I'll talk about the actual peer-reviewed papers in, in detail. Okay, so you can just. Uh, Google this, the Arctic Ocean was covered by a shelf ice. All of this stuff is available. Okay, so basically this is what we have um, in the case that, you know, um, where, where the Arctic became complete fresh water. The sea level is 130 meters lower. So on the Pacific side, everything's locked up. This is all land here, okay, right up to Greenland through the Canadian Archipelago, and the nearest strait right over to Greenland, it's all land. So there's no exchange of water with the Pacific Ocean. Meanwhile, if you cut, there's a bit of a choke point here, but there's still deep channels where water can flow. But the data shows there was, this was totally fresh water. This is from the sediment data and totally fresh water here. And if you look at this Greenland to Scotland ridge, okay, with Iceland here, then, then there's only a couple small channels here and here. But if the ice is 900 meters thick here, the ice shelves floating, extending out, and, and also ice shelves, because you know, we're in a glacial period, you know, very strong glacial period, and the ice shelves move farther and farther out into the Atlantic Ocean. So that combined with very thick sea ice, you know, they're year round. And we have, so we have basically ice covered here year round and fresh water building up and building up, and the only salt water is, is, is ejected out through, these, through the passages that are at the very bottom. So here's a couple images. So this is the ice shelf here. This is the, the topography of the, of the ocean floor coming up here. This is the normal Atlantic salty water out here. And there's more and more fresh water building up here. Okay, so there's only a little bit of remaining salt here. And the fresh water is, is, is coming, like it's coming out here and it's pulling out basically the, the salt water. So there's very little salt water. So you go down thousands of meters and it's basically all of fresh water here. Okay, so that was the, the um, two time periods, um, 60 to 70,000 years ago and 130 to 150,000 years ago. And then what happens is, as you start getting the ice melting and calving here, okay, the fresh water goes out into the ocean, right? This is all fresh water and warm salty water goes over the ridge and it's denser so it just falls back in. So this starts filling up with salt water. And when you get a sudden melting of the ice sheet, um, then the fresh water all surges out, you get freshwater hosing, which goes into the you know, Atlantic in this case here, and then the salt water comes in, and then, you, and then when this completely retreats, you have the situation today where we have a lens of fresh water near the surface and then salt water, but the Arctic Ocean is mostly salty. So the Arctic Ocean was covered by up to 900 meter thick shelf ice and was filled entirely with fresh water at least twice in the last 150,000 years. This surprising finding um, is the result of long-term research by scientists from the Alfred Wegener Institute and the Merum, which is in Bergen, Norway, I believe. With a detailed analysis of the composition of marine deposits, um, this study showed that the Arctic Ocean as well as the Nordic seas did not contain sea salt in at least two glacial periods. These oceans were filled with large amounts of fresh water under a thick ice shield. The water could then be released into the North Atlantic in very short periods of time when the ice started retreating. And these sudden freshwater inputs, freshwater hosing it's called in the simulation, 
could explain rapid climate oscillations for which no satisfying explanation has been previously found. Okay, so 60 to 70,000 years ago, a particularly cold part of the last glacial period, you know, large parts of northern Europe and North America were covered by ice sheets. The European ice sheet spanned a distance of more than 5,000 kilometers from Ireland and Scotland via Scandinavia to the eastern rim of the Kara Sea in the Arctic Ocean. And in North America, we had the couple, two large ice sheets covering Greenland, of course, and the Bering Sea coastline were glaciated. So what was the ice situation like even further north in the Arctic Ocean? Was it covered by thick sea ice or maybe with the tongues of these vast ice sheets um, floating on it far beyond the North Pole? Okay, so it, we don't have... Scientific answers to these questions have been more or less hypothetical so far because, you know, when we have glaciers on land, they deposit boulders, moraines, glacial valleys, you know, and we get lots of traces in the... In the in the geography of the existence of the prior ice sheet. Okay, but in the Arctic over the ocean, um, there's very few traces of these vast ice shelves. Okay, but there, but there evidence is being taken from uh, cores in the seafloor sediments and they're giving a surprising conclusion. They show that the floating parts of the northern ice sheet covered large parts of the Arctic Ocean in the past 150,000 years and about 70 to 60,000 years ago and 150 to 130,000 years ago, fresh water accumulated under the ice and created a completely free, completely fresh Arctic Ocean for thousands of years. Okay, this changes everything in, about the paleo records. It changes our complete understanding. It happened not once but twice in you know, the last 150,000 years. This is a huge finding. So how do we know for sure? Well, thorium, there's no thorium in the sediments for those time periods. If there's no thorium in the sediments, that means that there was no salt in the water. Okay, because uh, what you do from, you, you do a core through the sediment and you get the dating and you find out that in salt water, the decay of naturally occurring uranium always results in the production of the isotope thorium-230. And then thor that would accumulate on the seafloor where it remains detectable for a very long time due to its half-life of 75,000 years. Okay, well, no thorium in the sediments for this period of time, therefore no uranium, therefore no salt in the water, therefore it's totally fresh water, all the way through the water column, essentially. You know, the thorium isotope is like a natural clock. So it's repeated and widespread absence is a giveaway that reveals what happens. The only reasonable explanation for no thorium in the sediments under the Arctic Ocean for those two time periods in the last 150,000 years was that the Arctic was filled with fresh water. So that you had frozen water, you know, the ice cap on top and the sea ice, and then it was all liquid, it was all fresh water underneath, liquid water fresh water, huge amount. So this is a completely new picture for the Arctic Ocean. So how is this possible? How can a large ocean basin connected by several straits with the North Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean turn entirely fresh? So you, real, you have to realize that in glacial periods, there was so much water in the ice form building up that it lowered sea levels up to 130 meters lower than today. Multiply by 3.3, that's, uh, that's about 420 feet lower than today. Now the ice masses in the Arctic, the floating ice shelves extending far down into the water, they restricted ocean cir circulation even further. So shallow connections like the Bering Strait or the sounds of the Canadian archipelago were above sea level, so it cut off the connection entirely to the Pacific Ocean. In the Nordic seas, the large icebergs extended to the seafloor and stopped the exchange of water mass. There was at least 1,200 cubic kilometers per year of fresh water added to the Arctic basin from flow of glaciers, ice melt, rivers draining. And therefore, so we have these barriers and therefore, you know, the salt water that filled, um, and then once the ice went, the salt water could then go back in. This is a huge, huge deal, and it does explain the Dansgaard Osher oscillations, the 8 to 10 degrees, and climate tipping points, and abrupt climate change. 
Huge, huge new finding. Thank you for listening.